Starting off strong in our number 15 spot is the aforementioned Michael Douglas. If you don't recognize the name, you'll certainly recognize a couple of the films he's been in. Basic Instinct, Fatal Attraction, Wall Street, these are just a few of the movies in which Douglas has delivered a stunning performance. I think you're terrific. Though the actor started out, as all aspiring stars do, with small-time roles, he finally made his first breakthrough on the 1969 CBS Playhouse special, and he's been on an upward trajectory as both an actor and a producer. Well, almost. You see, Douglas also has some skeletons in his closet that he would not like to see the light of the day again. Besides giving him a name as a credible actor, Douglas' works have had the added and likely unwanted effect of painting him as a sex addict in the eyes of the public. This notion is perpetuated mostly by the hypersexual nature of the characters he played in movies like Fatal Attraction and Basic Instinct, as well as the actor's two marriages, the second of which was to Catherine Zeta-Jones, a woman 25 years his junior. Though this hasn't helped to paint Mike as an all-round clean guy in the eyes of the public, he wouldn't be on this list for just hearsay. Remember what we said in the intro? Well, Michael Douglas reportedly checked himself into a sex addiction hospital for rehab during his first marriage to Deandra Luca, basically pioneering the act for all Hollywood. According to the HuffPost, Douglas reportedly stated the following about the rehabilitation in his biography written by John Parker. Sex is just a wave that sweeps over me, an impulse that is overpowering. I'm helpless. Every time. Hmm. Sounds a whole lot like an addiction to me. Though the actor denies that he had any problems with sex addiction, there's a good chance he feels that way, because there isn't really a word for the concept in those times. After all, according to that very same HuffPost article, Mike's father, Kirk Douglas, says rather casually, What's wrong with sex addiction? I've been addicted to sex my whole life. There's a whole lot more to say about Mike Douglas' situation, such as the cause of a certain cancer he battled with for a while. But we'll leave him be for now. Now that that's over up next on our list is a case that's a bit more intricate than Mike Douglas's and far more controversial. Jane Mansfield had many jobs in her life, an actress, a model, a nightclub entertainer, an esteemed member of the Playboy, the list goes on. However, none of these things is what she was really known for. Let me explain. Mansfield has a fine repertoire under her belt in terms of movies. She's won several awards for her contributions to television, including a Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year for her performance in The Girl Can't Help It. However, Mansfield was known more as her role as a sex symbol in the Hollywood at the time than she was as an actor. With her voluptuous figure, she, along with Marilyn Monroe, Betty Grable, and Mamie Van Doren, pioneered the dumb blonde aesthetic that prevailed in Hollywood for a long time afterwards. A lot can be said about Mansfield's story. For one thing, the actress was addicted to a lot of different things. Alcohol and narcotics were major players in this, but so also was the seldom talked about in that era sex addiction. All three of Jane's marriages dissolved in no small part due to a series of numerous extramarital affairs. Above all this, however, what the blonde bombshell was truly addicted to was publicity. Many described her as hounding after it, but not making the best show of it. Willing to do anything to turn a few heads, it wasn't uncommon for Mansfield to have a totally unplanned wardrobe malfunction while in public viewings. This combination of addictions is what led up to her final relationship before her untimely death with head of the Church of Satan, at the time Anton Levay. Next on our list was also a member of the Playboy magazine series, albeit at a much later time than her blonde predecessor. But who was she? Karian Panisha is a model, actress, and former beauty queen known for her appearances on reality TV shows like 
Sex Rehab with Dr. Drew and Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew. She gained attention as Miss United States teen in 2003 and later posed for Playboy. Her public life was marked by controversies and personal struggles, including issues with substance abuse, Paniche's erratic behavior and tumultuous experiences in the entertainment industry often made headlines, showcasing the challenges faced by individuals navigating fame and personal demons within the public eye. Her appearances on the aforementioned reality TV shows is actually the reason why she's likewise making an appearance on this list. In case the title didn't tip you off, Sex Rehab with Dr. Drew was a show primarily centered around helping celebrities to overcome and work through their sex addictions and come out better for it in the end. It was probably not the best idea to televise the celebrities' journeys, but beggars can't be choosers, except when you're Karianne Panici. The actress refused to comply with the set rules of the show and questioned their methods of rehabilitating and was removed from the show as a result. However, she did eventually get rehab from a proper institution, albeit for a different addiction this time. Coming up next on our list is popular singer-songwriter Eric Bennett. Bennett gained prominence for his soulful voice and smooth melodies at the tail end of the 20th century coming into the 21st. Born Eric Bennett Jordan, he embarked on a successful music career marked by albums like True to Myself and A Day in the Life, showcasing his talent for crafting romantic ballads and heartfelt lyrics. His 1999 album, A Day in the Life, garnered acclaim and featured the hit single Spend My Life With You, a duet with Tamiya that soared on music charts. Beyond his musical achievements, Benet faced public scrutiny due to his highly publicized marriage to actress Halle Berry, which ended in divorce in 2005, which brings us neatly over to his reason for being on this list. The divorce between the two caused such a massive uproar in the entertainment world. At the time before the divorce was announced, Bennett came out publicly and state that he had cheated on his wife and it was due to an addiction to humping, as the singer put it. He proceeded to check himself into a sex addiction rehab center for about a month to show Halle he was serious about remaining committed to the relationship. Despite his best efforts, the divorce still went through and both parties have long since moved on from each other. Interestingly enough, the singer seems to have very different views on the situation than when he first started out. As the story goes now, Bennett simply went to the sex rehab center to fulfill all of righteousness and improve his chances of getting Halle Berry to forgive him. He says what he had was not a sex addiction, but an isolated event. Regardless of the personal setbacks, he continued to excel in the music industry, releasing albums like Hurricane and The One, solidifying his position as a respected figure in contemporary R&B. Bened's legacy remains defined by his musical prowess and perseverance in navigating personal challenges while staying true to his craft. Hope you can handle the heat. Our next on the list is known for being extra spicy. Elizabeth Taylor, an iconic Hollywood actress, had been captivating audiences with her beauty, talent and glamour since all the way back in the mid 20th century. Renowned for her violet eyes and magnetic presence on screen, Taylor starred in timeless classics like Cleopatra, Cat on a Hot Tin Roof, and Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? Taylor's talent earned her two Academy Awards for Best Actress, cementing her status as a cinematic legend. Though she has carried out works and many philanthropic endeavors, including her advocacy for AIDS victims, much of her popularity came from the long shadow spread by the excesses of her personal life. Her series of eight marriages drew the public eye far more than her philanthropic efforts, or her acting for that matter, ever did. She was able to impart such numbers in part due to how early she started, a sheltered innocent life in Bond Street, London, and a series of homeschooling had instilled the idea 
that marriage and love came hand in hand, and as such, whoever she married, she would love. This theme led to a lot of her marriages and a lot of divorces. Her first marriage, her first husband, Conrad Hilton Jr., at 18 years old. She quickly divorced him after being exposed to his more violent tendencies and moved on to her next husband, Michael Wilding, just one year later. She also divorced him. However, it's with her third marriage and onwards that her addictions and excesses started to play a role. What followed was a series of weddings to men who she'd cheated on the previous husband in the line with. It's almost as if her sense of what a wedding was made her feel obligated to wed these men she was with in infidelity, men she was with due to a lack of control over her addiction. Other addictions cropped up later down in her life. Though it was not a pretty sight, it's a solid example of how a series of addictions can greatly alter a person's public image and not for the better. In our number 10 spot, we've got the second person we mentioned in the intro, the illustrious Talula Bankhead. Who better to kick off our top 10 than the most glamorous gal of the 30s? Talula, a magnetic and audacious actress, dominated the stages of Broadway and screens during the early 20th century. Known for her husky voice, wit, and flamboyant persona, she captivated audiences in productions like The Little Foxes and Lifeboat. Bankhead's uninhibited lifestyle and provocative behavior defied societal norms, contributing to her legendary status as a free-spirited icon. Her talent and fearlessness in tackling controversial roles defined her career. It's not hard to see how someone with such an extroverted and uninhibited lifestyle would fall prey to such addictions as the one we're talking about today. Though, of course, once again during her time, it was not really viewed as such. Thankfully, we don't need to scrounge for details that hinted at her addiction. The actress was very open about her exploits. Bankhead had had so many affairs that she once famously complained about going too long without one during a rare and momentary dry spell for her. Being the flamboyant person she was, Talula threw many, many parties, and if sources are to be believed, she answered a good number of them in nothing but a smile. Her sexual exploits weren't limited to men either. Many of the women in her life also similarly had relationships with Bankhead. Her PEA, actress Patsy Kelly, confirmed the two had a sexual relationship while she was under her wing. Tulala herself did not like using the word lesbian, however, and preferred to call herself ambisextrous. Beyond her theatrical prowess, her charisma and unabashed individuality left an indelible mark on entertainment history, forever immortalizing her as an enigmatic and unconventional Hollywood star. Following from the illustrious Bankhead in our number nine spot is someone who could almost compete with her predecessor on this list in terms of sheer trailblazing. Clara Bow, a vivacious and pioneering actress, epitomized the Roaring Twenties spirit as a leading silent film star. Known as the It Girl, her charisma, natural charm, and expressive acting style propelled her to fame in movies like It and Wings. Bo's magnetic on-screen presence and ability to embody the modern independent woman captivated audiences worldwide. Rising from a tumultuous childhood, she became a symbol of the era's flapper culture, setting fashion trends and redefining Hollywood glamour. Her fame peaked in 1931, when at the age of 28, she chose to leave the film business amid a whirlwind of scandalous rumors. Nevertheless, it's important to remember that a lot of these alleged scandals had their origins in the romanticism of the past, a movement that Bao, like her contemporaries, enthusiastically embraced. According to an article from The Hairpin, Bao, like many other famous women of her era, considered her ties with the men in her life, the majority of whom she most likely had close relationships with, to be engagements. Bao was also at the center of other scandals, including as the well-publicized claim that she had relationships with every member of the USC football team. 
Her secretary also took personal documents from her, and she tried to use these records as leverage by accusing her of being inebriated all the time and of other transgressions. Despite her success, personal struggles and the advent of sound films led to her retirement in the early 1930s. Clara Bow remains an enduring icon of the silent film era, celebrated for her talent, beauty, and groundbreaking contributions to cinema. Up next is the critically acclaimed actress and dancer Louise Brooks. Brooks, an emblematic figure of the silent film era, remains an enduring icon known for her unparalleled beauty, distinct bobbed hair, and enigmatic allure. Born in 1906, the Kansas-born actress revolutionized the cinematic landscape with her captivating performances in films like Pandora's Box and Diary of a Lost Girl. Brooks's magnetic screen presence, coupled with her ability to portray complex, independent female characters, challenged societal norms and propelled her to international stardom. Beyond her on-screen persona, her candidness, intellect and non-conformist attitude set her apart in an era of conformity. Despite a relatively short-lived Hollywood career, Brooks' impact reverberates through cinematic history, influencing fashion and redefining notions of femininity and independence, making her an eternal symbol of the liberated modern woman during the early days of cinema's evolution. And liberated she was in many aspects of her life, including the people she brought to her bed. She admitted to being a sexually liberated woman who was open to trying all sorts of new things in and out of the bedroom. Alongside her natural infidelity, this was a contributing factor to the many dalliances she had both in and out of her two marriages. Much like Talula Bankhead, Brooks also had sexuality concerns surrounding her. However, she affirmed vehemently that she was not a lesbian or bisexual, despite having multiple relations with women. If you're enjoying the video so far, don't forget to like and subscribe. Sliding in at number seven is the screenplay and writer Barbara Lamar. Lamar, a luminary of the silent film era, captivated audiences with her mesmerizing beauty, unmatched charisma, and multifaceted talent. Born in 1896, she emerged as a force in Hollywood, dazzling in films like The Three Musketeers and The Prisoner of Zender. Lamar's allure wasn't confined to the screen. Her off-screen persona as a poet, screenwriter, and fashion icon further cemented her status as a cultural phenomenon. Recognized for her risque and seductive roles, she challenged the constraints of her time, defying societal norms with her boldness and sophistication. Much like many others on this list, Lamar's sex addiction was never really diagnosed as such due to the outlook on the concept of sex for her time. Though Lamar is said to have had five husbands, it was never really confirmed whether or not her first husband, Jack Lattell, was actually married to her. He unfortunately died just three weeks into the marriage. Lamar rose quickly to fame and jumped from husband to husband. Her love life was a thing of wonder and great controversy, with many believing her constant divorces and marriages were in some way due to her seductive nature a need for multiple men. Despite her rapid rise to fame, personal struggles and a tumultuous lifestyle shadowed her career. Tragically, her life was cut short at the age of 29 due to health complications, leaving behind a legacy that reverberates through Hollywood history. Barbara Lamar's indelible mark on cinema endures as a symbol of glamour, talent, and the tempestuous nature of fame in the early days of the film industry. In our number six spot for the day is Joan Collins. Joan Collins, an iconic British actress, epitomized sophistication and glamour, gracing both stage and screen with her captivating presence. Born in 1933, Collins gained prominence for her roles in film and television, notably portraying the cunning and glamorous Alexis Carrington in the popular 1980s series Dynasty. 
her magnetic charisma and elegant allure made her a global fashion icon. Collins's career spanned several decades, showcasing her versatility in roles ranging from dramatic performances to comedic turns. Her tenacity and resilience in navigating the entertainment industry reinforced her status as a legendary figure. She was also something of a legend in other aspects as well. Joan had a whopping five husbands to her name. Her first husband she divorced due to an attempted rape on her. Her next relationship, however, was to famous promiscuous actor Warren Beatty. We'll be seeing him in a bit. Unsurprisingly, she left him due to charges of infidelity. All other of her marriages were divorced due to charges of infidelity on one or both parties. Beyond her acting achievements, Collins delved into writing, penning best-selling novels and memoirs. Her embodiment of timeless elegance and her unwavering commitment to her craft cemented her as a celebrated Hollywood star, leaving an indelible legacy as an emblem of grace, talent and enduring style in the world of entertainment. We finally broke into our top five, and who better to start us off than the blonde bombshell herself, Marilyn Monroe. Now, Monroe's been known all over for a lot of things. Her image has changed and evolved over time from a sex symbol to the 1950s America, a pioneer for the dumb blonde aesthetic and a delectable actress in her own right. Unfortunately, Monroe also struggled with sex addiction alongside her illustrious career, Monroe has had many sexual partners, however it is less known that she was actually molested and sexually abused as a child. This incident unfortunately acted as a stepping stone that opened the doors towards sexual addiction for her. She bravely spoke pubically about her condition when asked and talked about how she has struggled with the consequences of her actions. Monroe's case of addiction really expands on the idea of sexual addiction not as a desire for sex in itself, but as a longing for intimacy and the use of sex to take the place of that intimacy as opposed to love and strong, long-lasting relationships. Over the years, Monroe had multiple sexual partners, but when looking at all of them through this lens, it is no wonder that she never bore any children with any of them. Though some might say it wasn't in the cards for her, it's clear to see that she would not bear children while still struggling with her addiction to sex. Ultimately, her addiction to other narcotics coupled with the pressure fame wrought led to her untimely death, leaving us wondering what might have been had she been able to resolve her addictions. If you have any doubt as to whether or not this guy should be on this list, then you'll be shocked to find that he bedded not one, two, but three people on this list. Some even say he managed to take the illustrious Monroe, who we covered in the list beforehand. Frank Sinatra, often dubbed Old Blue Eyes, was an iconic figure in 20th century music and entertainment. Born in 1915, Sinatra's legendary career spanned over five decades, leaving an indelible mark on the music industry. Renowned for his velvety voice and unparalleled phrasing, he became a symbol of musical excellence, with hits like My Way, Fly Me to the Moon, and New York, New York. His talent transcended music. Sinatra was also a prolific actor, starring in acclaimed films such as From Here to Eternity and The Manchurian Candidate. His magnetic charm and charismatic persona earned him a place among Hollywood's elite. Despite this, though Sinatra's life was punctuated by controversies, alliances with political figures, and tumultuous relationships, the last of which was in part due to his overactive sex drive, Sinatra just couldn't keep it in his pants. Much like the case with Michael Douglas, who we covered first, Sinatra had an uncontrollable impulse for sex, and most especially three ways. His then wife, Nancy Barbato, claimed to tolerate his infidelity because she knew where his heart was. That all quickly changed when the famous singer started chasing after Ava Gardner's skirts. Safe today, they divorced shortly after. Despite personal ups and downs, his influence on music and entertainment remains unparalleled. 
solidifying his legacy as one of the greatest entertainers in history, revered for his artistic brilliance and cultural impact. We're finally broaching our top three, and we're kicking it off with the cowboy heartthrob, Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, an enduring Hollywood legend, carved his legacy as a multifaceted artist, acclaimed actor, director, and producer. Born in 1930, Eastwood gained fame through iconic roles in westerns like The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly, and as Dirty Harry in the eponymous series. His stoic, tough guy persona became synonymous with cinematic excellence. Beyond his acting prowess, Eastwood's directorial talents garnered widespread acclaim with films like Unforgiven, Million Dollar Baby, and Mystic River earning critical acclaim and numerous awards, showcasing his versatility behind the camera. Throughout his career, Eastwood's dedication to storytelling and exploration of complex themes resonated with audiences worldwide. Despite occasional controversies, his impact on cinema remains profound, establishing him as a revered figure in the industry. Eastwood's enduring career and artistic contributions solidify his place as an icon in Hollywood history, celebrated for his remarkable talent and cinematic achievements. All his contributions to Hollywood serve to paint a picture of Clint as this all-round guy, but that all does a complete 180 in his personal life and his relationships. Eastwood was a staunch sex addict, amassing up to over 28 confirmed relationships and an assortment of eight children within all those. Lana Turner, an enduring Hollywood icon, illuminated the silver screen with her beauty, grace and acting prowess throughout the mid 20th century. Born in 1921, Turner's career soared with standout performances in classics like The Postman Always Rings Twice and Peyton Place. Her signature style and captivating presence earned her the nickname The Sweater Girl, captivating audiences with her timeless elegance. Beyond her on-screen success, Turner's personal life often made headlines, marked by tumultuous relationships and publicized scandals. It is through the lens of these scandals and her love life that the truth of her sex addiction can be unveiled. Turner had a number of relationships in her lifetime, amongst which were eight marriages, one of those to the same man. Throughout and in between these marriages, she also had a number of carnal relationships besides. According to the Daily Mail, Frank Sinatra, one of her many lovers, claimed it was all she could think about sometimes. He said, she seemed uninterested in anything other than going to bed. If I tried to engage her in small talk, she was indifferent. World events, forget it. She didn't want to talk about movie making or her career or mine, and she definitely wasn't interested in my family life. All she wanted was to have sex with me, and as often as possible. If this was but one of her many lovers, imagine how she treated the rest. Despite having only one biological child, Cheryl Crane, Turner was said to have many abortions covered up by her business manager, Benton Cole. Despite the roller coaster of fame, Turner's talent and enduring charm solidified her status as a Hollywood legend. Her cinematic contributions and ability to embody the epitome of glamour continue to enchant audiences, leaving an everlasting imprint on the golden age of Hollywood told you we'd be seeing him again. In our number one spot for the day is Warren Beatty. Warren Beatty, a prominent actor, director, producer, and Hollywood icon, emerged as a multifaceted talent during the late 20th century. Born in 1937, Beatty's career spanned decades, marked by critically acclaimed performances in films such as Bonnie and Clyde, Reds, and Heaven Can Wait. His magnetic charm and versatility earned him widespread acclaim. Beyond his acting prowess, Beatty showcased his directorial genius in movies like Reds, huh? uh -uh. You wrong. which garnered him multiple Academy Awards. Known for his meticulous attention to detail, 
he became synonymous with cinematic excellence, both in front of and behind the camera. Throughout his career, Beatty's personal life and relationships often made headlines, adding to his enigmatic persona. The actor famously made the claim that he slept with a new woman every day from when he was 20 till he married Annette Benning at the ripe old age of 55. From this claim, this would mean that he allegedly slept with over 10,000 women throughout this period. Despite occasional controversies, his contributions to cinema and commitment to storytelling remain unparalleled. Warren Beatty's lasting impact on film and his dedication to the craft solidify his place as an esteemed figure in the annals of Hollywood history. So that's our list of the top 15 sex addicts in old Hollywood history. Our first on the list is one I'm sure we're very familiar with. The star of The Lost Boys, Corey Haim. He was a Canadian actor who starred in a number of films with his friend and namesake, Corey Feldman. We all watched Corey on the TV. Little did we know there was a darker side to things that we would only find out years later. Corey had been an addict for most of his life. He struggled with substance abuse and was already drinking beer in his teenage years on the set of the hit show, Lucas. And a year later on the set of The Lost Boys, he tried marijuana for the first time. Corey claimed that filming License to Drive was the push off the drug abuse cliff. However, upon his return from a Hawaiian family vacation in 1989, he claimed to have overcome this vice without the help of any program. However, by 2001, Corey had been in and out of rehabilitation centers up to 15 times during which he was placed on prescription medication and started to abuse those too. His journey to sobriety was a rough one, and sources say he never reached it before he died at the age of 38. Although it was reported that Corey had been drug-free for the last two weeks before he died, it came to light that Haim had used illegal aliases to procure over 553 prescription pills in the 32 days before his death. Having used seven different physicians and used seven pharmacies to obtain the supply, the pills were Valium, Vicodin, Soma, Xanax, and the likes. Haim's agent discounted the possibility of an overdose, citing his recent drive toward clean living. However, Haim's primary doctor confirmed to investigators that Haim was addicted to pain medication. Eventually, drugs were ruled out as a cause of death for Corey. It's, it's out of your way. Yeah, made in your way is my way, didn't you know that? American actor and ex-boxer Ryan O'Neill is coming up at number 19 on our list today. You might have watched Peyton Place and thought the character Rodney Harrington was portrayed swimmingly. Well, you have Ryan to thank for that. He also starred in the 1970 motion picture Love Story. However, as you might have guessed, Ryan is on this list for only one reason. Drugs. Ryan is known for many things and seems to have a plethora of skeletons in his closet. He reportedly tried to hit on his own daughter at his wife's funeral, not recognizing her as his child, as well as fired a gun at his own son. Although he was a dashing actor, it was Ryan's temper and battles with addiction that kept him in the public eye for so long and apparently destroyed his entire family. Allegedly, he even gave his son, Griffin, cocaine at the age of 11 and strongly encouraged him to take it. Years later, Griffin claims this is what destroyed his life. He described his father, Ryan, as an abusive, narcissistic psychopath. His daughter walked in on him, having sex with her best friend, and he allegedly punched his son's pregnant wife in the face. Not just that, but when his son was 16, Ryan punched out his teeth. Ryan's family has been described as the most dysfunctional family in Hollywood. All his wives and all but one of his four children have struggled with drug abuse and addiction and Ryan seems to be the common denominator in all of that. Some time ago, Ryan and his son Redmond were arrested for possession of controlled substances and were each released on $10,000 bail. While the father walked free, 
Redmond ended up in jail, not for the first time. Ryan died on the 8th of December 2023 and left a trail of chaos in his wake. People are dramatic about their lives, but you really did have to raise yourself. Your father and mother were just not there for you. Much like Macaulay, Drew's childhood was also tainted by the cold hands of Hollywood. Making her debut at the age of seven with her role as the wide-eyed little girl from E.T. the Extraterrestrial, Drew had a tumultuous childhood marked by a tragic events. Being born into a dynasty meant that by the age of 11, she was put to work in a dog food commercial. And by seven, she was a movie star pouring Baileys over her ice cream. By the time Drew was 11, she had developed a drinking problem, and by the year after, it had escalated into a drug problem. When Drew was 13, she cut her wrists and her mother got her hospitalized. That's why she is number 18 on our list. When Drew was nine years old, her parents got a divorce. After that, her mother took her to Studio 54, where she was introduced to drugs and encouraged to dance with famous young men. Of course, this left a deep impression on the young Drew, and already at that age, she had begun calling herself a party girl and going out with her mother and her mother's friends up to five times a week. But by the time she was 12, she couldn't cope. And by 13, she found herself in the middle of an 18-month program in a rehabilitation center where she was treated for alcohol and drug addiction. When she got past that, she legally divorced her parents. Being 14 at the time, Drew had to find her own way. Acting didn't bear much fruit, as she couldn't be employed as an actor at the age of 15. In her book, Wildflower, Drew describes how she cleaned bathrooms in order to put food on the table for herself. She was doing better after that stint in rehab, but by the time her third marriage failed, she relapsed. Her friend, Cameroon Diaz, stood by her through all of it, and now Drew is doing well for herself without the addiction that tinted her childhood. Record producer, singer, and songwriter Bruno Mars is number 17 on our list today. We all know and love Bruno. We have heard his hit tracks at one point in our lives or the other. From Uptown Funk to Just The Way You Are, we've all moved our bodies to one of his tunes. He's so popular that Forbes estimated his earnings put him in the top 12 most paid artists in the world. But is Bruno as clean as we think? Bruno Mars, the musician known for his work with B.O.B. and Flo Rida, as well as his own solo, Just The Way You Are, is not liking just where he's at right now under arrest. In 2010, Bruno was involved in a drug scandal in Las Vegas. It took place at the Hard Casino on September 19th. The police swarmed in, and while searching the area, they discovered the 26-year-old in possession of a bag of cocaine. When talking to a police officer, Bruno reportedly described what he did as foolish and tried to convince them that he had never used drugs before. Fortunately for him, the police officers believed him, but Bruno still pleaded guilty to felony drug possession and in return was told that the charges would be erased from his criminal record if he agreed to stay out of trouble for a whole year. Today I don't feel like doing anything. Bruno paid a fine of $2,000 and did 200 hours of community service to clear his name. Years later in an interview, Bruno confessed to having lied to the authorities about having done cocaine before. He claims he was very drunk and intoxicated and attributed the whole affair with drugs to him being a young man. I don't live my life with regrets and I don't dwell on, on, on anything. Um, I feel like it, it happened, it, it must have happened for a reason. I, I hope that I'm not here today because of what happened then. I hope I'm here today because <clears throat> I hope I'm here today because of my achievements. Bruno has long since been clean and has returned to being the star we all know and love. Star, what's for dinner? <laughs> Moving us along at number 16, we've got Mary Kate Olsen. You might have heard of the Olsen twins. 
the two adorable baby girls who made their debut at nine months old when she and her twin sister were jointly cast for the role of Michelle Tanner in the family comedy Full House. It seems it's only the Olsen closet that's full of the two sisters. Mary-Kate seemed to be the one who struggled with her self-image, and this led her to drink, smoke, and do all sorts of things. At a point, it got so bad that she developed anorexic habits that eventually led to the full-blown disorder. She shut out her family because she didn't want to eat and didn't want to face the face that she had an addiction. When Mary was in high school, she went to parties with her friends, and they all did drugs and smoked marijuana and sniffed cocaine and all sorts of things which resulted in Mary becoming addicted at a very young age. The buzz from these events were held by the media and her bodyguard was even interviewed. He claimed to have seen her smoking, drinking and doing drugs. However, it did not really become a public spectacle until Mary-Kate's boyfriend, Heath Ledger, was allegedly found lying dead in his bed. The cause of death? Overdosing on harmful substances. When Ledger's body was found, Mary-Kate was the first person called and she immediately requested immunity in the case of who supplied Ledger the drugs. Tabloids everywhere carried the story, some implying that perhaps Mary-Kate was more involved in Ledger's death than she cares to admit. Following this, she was admitted into a rehabilitation center to treat her anorexia with a six-week rehabilitation program. However, sources claim that she also went to rehab to treat her drug addiction. Thankfully, she was treated and is now living in sobriety. American actor and musician River Phoenix is number 15 on our list for several reasons. Unlike Corey, River was proven to have died of a drug overdose, although sources say he was an occasional user. However, the statement of his ex-girlfriend, Martha Plimpton, begs to differ. Martha claimed it was River's drug use that affected their relationship. The two remained close friends until he died in late October 1993. River landed in Los Angeles after having spent the prior three weeks in Utah filming for a movie. Sources say that after landing, River spent a few days on a drug binge with his band member. They were both consuming cocaine and heroin and had not slept in days. On the day before his death, River arrived at the Viper Room with his entourage. Robert Forrest claims he remembers River tapping him on the shoulder during the performance and telling him he didn't feel so well, and he thought he had overdosed. Forrest brushed it off as an over-exaggeration. A few moments later, Forrest said that a commotion erupted in the club, and he went outside to find Mattis, his girlfriend, screaming as her boyfriend was lying on the sidewalk having convulsions. When the ambulance arrived, Phoenix was still alive, and his band member accompanied him to the medical center. Attempts to resuscitate River at the hospital were unsuccessful. He was pronounced dead at 1.51 a.m. PST on the morning of October 31st, 1993, at the age of 23. A girl Misha Barton is number 14 on our list. You might know her for her amazing performances in James Lapine's 12 Dreams or from the American soap opera, All My Children. But did you know that Misha, much like a handful of other actors, also struggled with a drug problem? You might have heard of the scandal at the club involving the date rape drug slipped into Misha's drink, but is that the true story? Sources say Misha had been on a drug-fueled downward spiral Texts between the now 37-year-old actress and a friend suggest she was desperate to get her hands on any drug she could find. Adderall, Xanax, Norcos, you name it. She even made reference to a cocaine dealer she knows very well. On her 31st birthday, Barton was spotted standing on a fence in her West Hollywood backyard and screaming about the end of the world. Her neighbors called 911 and Misha ended up spending the night in the hospital. Upon her release, she claimed her drink had been spiked with a date rape drug known as GHB during her birthday party. So, who is telling the truth? 
Broadway star Brittany Murphy is number 13 on our list. I'm sure you recognize her from shows like Clueless and Freeway. She even voiced one of the characters in the much-loved movie Happy Feet. Tragically, Brittany died late 2009. Preliminarily has said that it appears that Brittany died of natural causes. I don't know about you, but it seems so unusual to me. 32-year-old young ladies don't just die of natural causes. In December at the age of 32, under disputed circumstances, Although her drug use was never confirmed, rumors flew around that she regularly ingested heroin and sniffed cocaine. And when she collapsed in 2009, many attributed her death to a drug overdose. In the early 2000s, when Britney suddenly lost a lot of weight, many commented that she had too many drugs and not enough food. Her sudden marriage to Simon Monjack didn't help, as sources report that he was a very disturbed individual. He also died not up to five months after Brittany died. Some even believe her cause of death was something other than overdose. Simon, who was known famously in Hollywood as Konjak, was drowning in debt, and both Brittany's brother and father, years after her death, still believe that the cause was murder. However, after having found a multitude of prescription and non-prescription drugs at Brittany's bedside, the coroner maintains that the cause of death was a drug overdose. Brittany's friends as well confirmed that she did in fact have a drug problem for which they had begged her to get help for months before she died. She was discovered to have become dependent on pain medication after a series of cosmetic surgeries she underwent earlier in her life. Her cause of death still remains disputed, but for now, Brittany died an addict. American actor, musician, and child star Macaulay Culkin is coming up as number 12 on our list. The Home Alone star seems to have let the riches and fame lead him down the wrong path. Culkin described his father as a cruel, violent man. His parents never married and split when he was in his teens, and his mother filed for custody. Rising to fame at the tender age of 10, Kulkin was so paranoid that his parents wanted to steal his money, so he took his parents to court to block them from controlling his trust fund, which at the time was worth around $20 million. And afterward, the media reported that he divorced his parents. At the tender age of 15, Culkin was already thinking of how to protect his fortunes from his parents. From legal meltdowns and an arrest to drug abuse, Culkin's fall from grace was a hard thing for fans to bear. In 2004, a 24-year-old Macaulay's mugshot made headlines worldwide when he was charged with possession of 17.3 grams of marijuana and two controlled substances without a prescription in Oklahoma. He was briefly jailed for this and released on $4,000 bail. As rumors continued to spiral about his drug habit, snaps of Macaulay, looking gaunt and frail and clutching an energy drink, shocked fans in 2012. But Macaulay soon cleaned up his act and found love with his fellow child star, Brenda Song. Macaulay's angelic childhood self immortalized in Home Alone, resurfaces every Christmas with fans re-watching the festive favorite. Somewhere Ever heard of The Wizard of Oz? The then you have definitely heard of Judy Garland. Born as Frances Gum in June 1922, Judy attained international fame and stardom before she tragically lost her life in June 1969. She acted in a range of shows, often starring with Mickey Rooney and Gene Kelly after being signed to Metro-Goldwyn-Mayer MGM as a teenager. Judy, however, is on today's list, so you know what that means. Drugs. Judy struggled in her personal life from a very early age. The pressures of stardom definitely affected her physical and mental health, and it made matters worse that her physical appearance was often criticized by film executives who believed she was unattractive. Judy's mother recalled giving her energy and sleeping pills long before she was 10 years old. As she transitioned into Hollywood, 
Judy was given amphetamines and placed on a strict diet, and her weight was monitored constantly. Sources report that even before she starred as Dorothy when she was 17, she was already battling with a drug addiction. She told her biographer that the studio directors would give her and her co-star Mickey Rooney pills to keep them on their feet long after they were exhausted. Then they'd take them to the studio hospital and sedate them with sleeping pills. Then after four hours, they'd wake them up and give them pills to keep them up for the next 72 hours. That was a routine for them. Judy found it difficult to deal with being MGM's most visible and hardest working stars and eventually became a full-blown addict. After a series of nervous breakdowns, she eventually died of a drug overdose at the age of 47. Coming up at number 10 is Judy's co-star Mickey Rooney, who she described as having gone through the same drug pumping that she went through. You are the most precocious, overconfident, spoiled young man I've ever had the misfortune to meet. I think you're cute too. Mickey came and out to dispute to those claims and denied MGM ever giving him and Judy any drugs. However, the truth remains unknown as both Mickey and Judy are dead. Mickey died of a heart attack on a Sunday, but before that, his stepson came out publicly and described him as a violent husband with a rating addiction to sleeping pills. It seems much like Ryan, drugs brought out the wife beater in Mickey too. His stepson, Chris Arbor, claimed that Mickey's reliance on drugs was worrying, as well as his violent mood swings, which led to a life of abuse inflicted on his eighth wife throughout their marriage. In the eyes of the world, Mickey was the last of the stars forged in Hollywood's golden age and a charismatic, fun man. But behind the scenes, he was an angry, petulant man who was quick with his insults. Sources claim he tormented his wife all the time, bending her fingers back, screaming in her ears and pinching her. His struggle with addiction didn't help a bit. Chris who collected Mickey's medication weekly claimed he needed a shopping bag to carry it all. What a shocker this is. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to like and subscribe so we can bring more awesome content like this your way. Number nine is Joanna Moore, Hollywood's golden girl gone wrong and first wife of Ryan O'Neill. Joanne, born as Dorothy Joanne Cook, starred in over 17 feature films and guest starred in over 100 television series episodes before her alcohol and drug addiction swept her off her dainty feet, but not out of the public eye. It was an era when drug and alcohol addictions were seen as moral failures rather than real mental and physical issues. Thus, Joanna could only get help from psychiatric hospitals. She tried that in 1970, but not up to a year later. She was arrested for drunk driving after getting into a fight. This arrest led to her losing custody of her children. She ended up being supported by her daughter Tatum, who became a child star at the age of 10 and was one of the highest paid child actresses of her era. In 1963, Joanna married her third husband, Ryan O'Neill, and delivered her two children, Tatum and Griffin. In the years that followed, Ryan's career seemed to blow up, while Joanna's career slowed down. This could have been what led to her depressive state, but instead of acting roles, amphetamines and alcohol became more present in her life. Her alcohol and drug use escalated after her divorce and personal life was ravaged by substance abuse. She moved her family down to a rundown ranch where she had the awful idea of providing care to troubled youths. Her daughter, Tatum, describes the environment in her autobiography as one that was filled with drug abuse, unsanitary conditions beatings at the hands of her mother's 16-year-old boyfriend, and being locked in the garage for such long periods that her and her brother resorted to eating dog food. I don't know what to say. Her smoking habits eventually caught up to her and she ended up dying of lung cancer in 1997. Her memory lives on in the hearts of fans. Number eight on our list is the producer of one of Hollywood's most acclaimed movies, Gone with the Wind. 
Just like all the others, David Selznick made it onto this list for one reason and one reason alone. Drugs. Behind the scenes, his actors and actresses complained of his drug-induced terrorism, bullying and obsession with actresses are howing more cleavage. Gone with the Wind was theorized as one of the highest record-breaking films, winning 10 Oscars and a position as the highest box office take of any film ever. However, behind the scenes, David the producer pushed and pushed the film to fame and glory in a drug-fueled haze. He reportedly depended on drugs like Benzedrine to get him through long hours of filming. He was even spotted crushing up the drug and licking the pieces from his palm. How do you put it around your neck? The star of the Golden Ages, Marilyn Monroe, is number seven on our list. I'm sure you can guess why. We all loved Monroe's stunning performances and her saucy private life kept us on our toes. But little did we know, she battled with substance abuse, depression, and most likely bipolar disorder. She had beauty, fame, riches, men, but in the end, could not use any of these to find the stability she desperately needed. As she grew older, Marilyn began to forget her lines and then fell into deep despair and paranoia, which pushed her toward alcohol and drugs. In 1962, her psychiatrist found her dead in her Brentwood home. Coroners determined the cause of death to be acute barbiturate poisoning. Marilyn had overdosed. It wasn't until 2010 that a series of poems, letters and diary entries written by Monroe were published. In them we see the struggles of a shy, insecure woman who was orphaned at too young an age and battled with terrible loneliness. These are all drivers of addiction. However, Marilyn's matter was made worse after she was brought under public scrutiny after being propelled to fame. Having her nudes released without her consent must also have contributed to pushing her to a life of dependence on prescription drugs. I want you to find happiness and stop having fun. It's a terrible thing to be lonesome, especially in the middle of a crowd. Even after her death, fans are still trying to answer the questions that surfaced after her death. Had Marilyn still been alive, she would have graduated to drug after drug, from opium to heroin to cocaine in an unbreakable cycle. Coming up as number six on our list is the Princess of Pop, Britney Spears, the woman who single-handedly revived teen pop during the late 1900s and early 2000s. Not surprisingly, she also struggled with a drug addiction. Britney Spears became one of the most influential pop stars in recent memory with multiple hit singles. Shortly after divorcing Kevin Federline in 2006, revelations began surfacing about her drug addiction and mental health issues. After entering a rehab facility, she reportedly attempted suicide and was claiming to be the Antichrist. Luckily, Spears was able to get her life together after receiving a proper bipolar diagnosis and successfully completing rehab. The king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley is next up as number five on today's list. What did Presley do to make it into the top five? Stick around and find out. Years and years ago, millions of music lovers wept to the death of a star. He was only 41 years old and a bloated, fading version of the once beautiful man whose rhythmic hip swaying earned him the title Elvis the Pelvis. The body of the 42-year-old king of rock and roll. The world is shocked by Elvis Presley's sudden death after... His girlfriend found him lying face down in the master suite bathroom of his Memphis mansion in Graceland. When the toxicology report came back several weeks later, however, Elvis's blood was found to contain very high levels of the opiates Delaudid, Percodan, Demerol, and Codeine, as well as Quaaludes. Elvis's personal physician, George Nicopolis, or Dr. Nick, was at Elvis's beck and call for nearly a decade. He began treating the king for saddle pain in 1967, and all too soon, Elvis turned into an opiate addict. Are we 
Dr. Nick admitted at a hearing before the Tennessee Board of Health that he had prescribed thousands of doses of various addictive pills for Elvis, but also claimed he often slipped him sugar pills or placebos to try to control his addictions. Dr. Nick testified he gave in to all of Elvis's prescription requests because he wanted to keep Presley from seeking out these drugs on the street. How ironic is it that the rock star who President Richard Nixon awarded a special badge from the Bureau of Narcotics and Dangerous Drugs died of a drug overdose? It has a multitude of side effects. I said central nervous system problems, there's memory loss. I mean, the last end of result of this is death. I said, you don't want to do this. He said, no, my doctor said it's safe. It works quick and it's safe. <laughs> The famous king of pop, Michael Jackson, is number four on our list today. Rumor has it he used up to 19 fake IDs to fuel his drug addiction in the last 15 years of his life. Michael Jackson is recognized as one of the greatest cultural icons in the 20th century. He earned multiple awards, beating every other male singer ever. Prior to leaving the Jackson Five in 1984, Jackson and the other members of the group filmed a Pepsi commercial. During a simulated concert, pyrotechnics accidentally set Jackson's hair on fire, causing second-degree burns to his scalp. To help him with the pain from the severe burns and the reconstructive surgeries that followed, Jackson's doctors prescribed opioids. Later, Jackson would attribute the fire to the beginning of his experience with drug addiction. That is so stupid. That's the most ridiculous, horrifying story I've ever heard. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. In 1993, Jackson entered rehab where he progressed through a 12-step program. Despite his commitment to recovery, he continued to live with substance addiction for the rest of his life. Aside from his time in rehab, Jackson was largely in denial of his addiction. Friends and family routinely staged interventions and privately expressed their concerns regarding his drug habits. Unfortunately, Jackson turned down their help. Jackson died in 2009 at age 50 of cardiac arrest. His death was caused by a combination of sedatives and propofol, which his doctor prescribed and administered to treat insomnia. Afterward, his doctor was charged with involuntary manslaughter, but Jackson was already gone. His memory lives on in the hearts of his family and fans. Daniel Baldwin is an American actor and the second oldest Baldwin brother. Despite his fame and acclaim, Daniel made it to the top three worst drug addicts in Hollywood. In 1998, Baldwin was found running naked through the halls of New York's Plaza Hotel shouting his own last name and was arrested for possession of cocaine. He pleaded guilty to disorderly conduct and was sentenced to three months in drug rehab. He later revealed that he had been battling cocaine addiction since 1989. He claims that he started using cocaine at the age of 29 after landing his first acting job that year. After that, he became a die-hard cocaine addict. He didn't drink much, didn't take pills, didn't smoke, but cocaine grabbed him so much that he had to go into rehabilitation nine times before being able to overcome this addiction. Now, he's a rehabilitation coach and renowned actor that fans know and love. American actor and the man who played Kanicki from the movie Grease is number two on our list. Conway battled with addiction until he died in 2011. He even featured in two seasons of the reality TV show Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew. Around the mid-1980s, Conaway realized he had a substance abuse problem. He underwent treatment in the late 1980s, but in early 2008 appeared with other celebrities in the VH1 reality series Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew. Daniel accuses Jeff Conway of smuggling drugs, which is the spark that ignites him. No, I did not. Unbeknownst. No, I did not. Unbeknownst. No, I did not. Unbeknownst to you or not. It was revealed on the show that Conway was addicted to cocaine, alcohol, and painkillers, and that he was in a codependent relationship with his girlfriend, 
who was also a user of prescription opiates. The 60-year-old had suffered a back injury on the set of Grease while filming the greased lightning scene, which had been exacerbated by lifting boxes in his home, and he had turned to substances to manage the pain. In August 2009, Conaway was interviewed by Entertainment Tonight. In the interview, the actor claimed he was much better after a fifth back operation and that he had yet to use painkillers again. However, on May 11, 2011, Conaway was found unconscious from what was initially described as an overdose of substances believed to be pain medication. It seems he never overcame his addiction and eventually it killed him. Finally, we have Jody Sweeten. Drugs and alcohol just sort of numbed everything. I was doing cocaine and ecstasy and, you know, alcohol and all of that. The American actress and TV personality renowned for portraying Stephanie Tanner in the show Full House. Sweeten's journey took a challenging turn as she started consuming alcohol at the age of 14, Shortly after the conclusion of Full House, over the next 13 years, she battled substance abuse, including ecstasy, methamphetamine, and crack cocaine, attributing her choices to boredom. In 2009, Sweetin penned the memoir, Unsweetened, detailing her descent into alcohol and drug abuse following the show's conclusion. She candidly shared moments, such as addressing a crowd at Wisconsin's Marquette University while emotionally affected by a two-day binge. Reflecting on her life in the public eye, she discussed her positive transformation since achieving sobriety in December 2008. Despite a setback in 2013 following a separation, Sweetin redirected her path working as a clinical logistics coordinator at a Los Angeles drug rehab center and earning a degree as a drug and alcohol counselor. There we have it, folks. Hollywood's top 20 worst drug addicts. Did we miss anyone? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, you'll love the one showing on your screen right now. Click it and we'll see you in the next one.